Well, good morning, and I'd like to add my greetings also to all the mothers. A happy Mother's Day, a special day. But as I heard some folks talking on early morning television, every day can be a Mother's Day because of all the things that they do for us and with us, and, and so it's a special day indeed. For those of you that I have not met, I'm uh, Glenn Dunn, and I have the privilege of serving here uh, until your new pastor is called, I hope, uh, that I will be here throughout the entire duration. That, that is the plan. It is an opportunity I never planned on, but please know again how much my wife Karen and I have enjoyed your hospitality and you've made us feel so welcome and warm here. We look forward to the future with anticipation as we wait for the future to unfold and as we prepare for the next phase in the life of Santa Fe Church. Just a brief recap this morning, or maybe some of you have not been able to be with us. Our first Sunday we talked about unexpected journeys, and this is an un unexpected journey for this congregation that uh, you've had a senior pastor for a long time, and now there's this in-between time, an unexpected journey. And secondly, we ask the question, where do we go from here? And so today, I want to think with you about what I have termed when life roughs us up a bit. I'm going to focus on the Old Testament today, and perhaps we will include the New Testament in a future sermon regarding this same subject. So let us worship God, and will you please pray with me? Gracious God, we ask that your spirit be with us this morning, and may the words of our mouths and the med meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you now and evermore. Sunday after Sunday, ministers stand in a pulpit, or something that resembles a pulpit, perhaps, and it sounds as if the gospel only consists of demands. We're always emphasizing that, that angle, it seems. Go tell, we say. Go build, lift, serve, take up your crosses, follow, love. But today I want to change from demand to promise. We are a shaken and concerned people Sometimes we are down on ourselves even, I think, and life has that end of rope feeling many, uh, many times, and many of the things we try seem to never leave the runway. We're just sort of stuck in neutral. We are in the midst of a relationship change, perhaps. We keep looking at around the world in different ways and wondering how we fit. Dollars seem smaller in our hands, and the nightly news continues to be filled with wars and rumors of wars. And where is the church in all of this? What does it have to say? Well, I want to ask you to take your concerns or any thoughts of anxiety this morning and put them aside for just a few moments or at least long enough to hear these words from Isaiah. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If ever there was a time in our history or in my lifetime, perhaps in most of your lifetimes, we need to hear those words more than ever, it seems to me. And so how are you feeling today? We ask each other that almost every time we see someone. How are you doing? How are you feeling? What's new? And we have our standard replies, don't we? But I want to ask the question a little a little bit differently. How do you feel honestly? How are things go going in your life and in your family? If you are feeling a bit roughed up today, 
then I say you are, you are entitled. I feel that way often sometimes, but after a good night's sleep and a good tasty breakfast and a couple of cups, cups of coffee, I'm usually ready to take on the day. Isaiah's people had lost just about everything. The world of that day was rocking under the campaigns of King Cyrus. Isaiah was a prophet to the Jews during their Babylonian exile. For generations they had been wandering and wondering. When will this, when will this ever end, they must have thought. Their homes had been destroyed, their temple demolished, their priesthood not functioning. Some, no doubt, had lost their faith. Matters were so bad that even the young had lost their strength and energy, so it seems the way Isaiah wrote, wrote this passage. Societies have a way of looking to their young for hopes of a better tomorrow. But in Isaiah's time, things were so depressing that even the young had fallen exhausted. Even those in the prime of life couldn't cope with the circumstances of life. But that is how bad, news, how bad the news was. But this description is followed with promise, I believe. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. To put it another way, perhaps Isaiah is saying, we would not be weary if we learned to just wait on God. I believe one of the most difficult things you and I do in life is wait. We live in a microwave society now, don't we? We, we want the world to move in the direction we want it to, and we want to we want it to move and we want it to get on with things. And I remember years ago, I was at the airport ready for a flight and up walked one of the OU basketball coaches and I recognized him and he and I engaged and we started talking and I said, are you on a recruiting trip? And he said, yes. He told me where he was going and he had four or five other trips that week. And I said, what is that like to go into a home and try to recruit a young basketball player and his comment was they want everything now they don't want to work for it they don't want to wait they want they want that championship now they want that ring now it's difficult to put in the work we want to act and sometimes to the point of feeling panic and stress do something we shout for goodness sakes, do something. We shout it to the world, don't we? We shout it to the President, to the Congress, to the United Nations, to church, to the City Council. Who needs waiting? It has been said that waiting is for those who like things just as they are. It ought to be said, however, that in the Bible, waiting is not a passive do-nothing experience. Waiting always involves another. There is an object out there somewhere. There is another with whom we are engaged. Waiting for a child to come home before curfew. Waiting for a job or an exam grade waiting for the doctor to come out of surgery and tell us how things are going or how they went. Waiting rooms may be in the college dorm or in the family den or bedroom or on the street or in the White House. There is somebody out there with whom we are engaged. The interaction of a person's soul with the living God is what biblical waiting is all about. Waiting is to see whether or not we have a problem or whether the problem has us. 
Waiting often enables us to put back what the hard engagements of living have subtracted from us, who have, that have drained us, that have absolutely exhausted us. It has been said that time heals all wounds. I'll let you decide if you agree with that statement or not. But I do believe that time allows us to wait long enough into the future <clears throat> to eventually live past the disappointment and move on with life. <clears throat> and so how do we look at things that are happening all around us these days? How do we understand what has happened in Ukraine, in the Middle East, and other parts of the world? We all bring our own meaning to events, don't we? What I might think is special, you may not think is special at all. What you might think is wonderful, I might think, oh, okay. You may enjoy a movie that I don't care for, but vice versa. We all bring our own meaning to events. We're in the baseball season, and yes, I am a baseball fan. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you my team that I've enjoyed since I was a little guy, and I don't react to this too harshly, if you would, please. But I've been a lifelong Yankees fan. Now, I know that's, I can hear some booing going on, and that's okay. That's okay. I've heard it before. But one of my greatest ex experience in life was when I was able to go to the old Yankee Stadium years ago, and we're there, and I'm, I'm a kid in a candy store, and I'm looking around, and I told my wife, Babe Ruth stood there, and Whitey Ford stood there, and Mickey Mantle, an Oklahoma guy, he stood there, and I thought, wow, what a great opportunity, and wouldn't you know it, it started to rain, and the game was called, so it took me 50 years to get there, and what do I do? I pick a rain out. But my new best friend, who was from the Bronx, I found out, I told him, wouldn't you know, it took me 50 years to get here, and I pick a rain out. And he said in his good Bronx accent, ah, uh, don't worry about it. It takes a special guy to come to a rain out. Let me buy you a hot dog and a beer. So <laughs> all was right with the world after all. Base, baseball umpires have a tendency to call them as they see them, right? The interpretation of that may be nothing is anything until we call it. That is what waiting is all about, perhaps. It enables us to make a decision from a better point of view. The situations we encounter may in indicate the working of God in our midst. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. In Isaiah, we read three graphic phrases, mount up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. It is plain to see what is intended here, I think. If we wait for the Lord, we will be able to soar to rise above the normal vantage point and see things more clearly as they are. Ground level cameras may be a plus in the world of television and sports, but ground level vision is a handicap in understanding life. Information and comprehension are not the same thing. And so a question today, have you done any soaring lately? Have you felt like an eagle? Have you been able to get above it all? Above the job, above the family, above the political climate, to see things more clearly. If we are able to do this, we would know that only God is necessary. We may not always know the plan of God, but we do always know it is there. Then after the mounting up, there comes the running. Not from fear, but rather to get on with life. We run and walk because the vision provides us with the power. 
They shall run and not be weary, Isaiah says. I was invited to attend the missions team meeting this uh, past week, and I was amazed, and I mean that in a loving way, in a kind way, I was amazed at the number of mission projects that Santa Fe Church is involved with. And you can certainly be proud of all the work that you are doing to help many other people who live in a less fortunate world than we do. It has been said, what mission really means is seeing what God is doing in a situation and trying to do it with him. I love that. Have I always done it? No. Have I always thought about it? No. But let me say that again. Mission really means is seeing what God is doing in a situation and trying to do it with him. And then we walk and do not faint. The longer I live, the more I respect consistency and the ability to see things through, to see things through, to stay with it, to not give up. In the near future, the pastor nominating committee will be reading many personal personnel uh, information forms from several candidates, I'm predicting. It will require many hours of reading and discussing the individual forms, comparing ideas and thoughts about those who inquire about the open position that is here. In short, it will require consistency and diligence in discerning who the next pastor will be for Santa Fe Church. They shall walk and not faint. Life has its share of harshness these days, to be sure. It is not easy, it's not an easy scene, and life keeps dealing out its contradictions, its puzzles, its, its moments of unsuredness, its hard moments. President John F. Kennedy said, life is unfair. It certainly can be, but it can also be joyful and wonderful and full of glorious moments. My wife and I attended a graduation down at OU last Thursday for a niece who was born in Texas, grew up in Texas, and her family's there, but she chose to come to OU, and all of my family that, down there just absolutely fainted on, on, you know, they fainted that she wanted to come here. But she came and got her nursing degree, and we went to the graduation along with her family. And I don't know about you, but every time I go to a graduation and I hear pomp and circumstance, I get a big lump right here in my throat because graduation is mixed, mixed blessings and mixed emotions, isn't it? Or saying goodbye to those four years or five years or six years, whichever the case may be. And then, hello, world. Here we are. It's mixed blessings, isn't it? So the take-home message is this today. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So if we are feel, feeling, feeling a bit roughed up these days, it's okay, it seems to me, for we can be assured that God is waiting for us. And the question then becomes, for whom do we wait? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.